In today's video, we're going to take a look at the lob wedge and the sand wedge, talk about the differences, and figure out if you really need both in your bag. So by the time we get to the end of this video, I'm going to give you a way to figure out if you really need both of these clubs in your bag and which one might actually be hurting your score rather than helping your score. But before we dive into the details, I just want to talk about one thing and that's the names of these clubs. The names Lob Wedge and Sand Wedge are really not doing anyone any favors. I want you to forget about those names for a lot of reasons that we're going to talk about and just start talking about them in terms of the numbers on them. This is a 54 degree wedge, this is a 60 degree wedge. The 60 degree is what you might be thinking of a lob wedge and the 54 or even a 56 is probably what you think of a sand wedge. But forget about the names for now and just focus on the numbers because that's what's important when it comes to figuring out how useful these clubs are, what you should be using them for, and whether you need both in your bag. So let's dispel some of the myths around these clubs. First of all, the sand wedge, or the 54 in this case, is not the only club you can use out of the sand. There's a lot of reasons to use different clubs out of the sand. Also, the lob wedge, or the 60 degree in this case, isn't an automatic choice when you're within 50 yards or some other distance. There's a lot of reasons to use different clubs, even up to a 9 iron or even a 7 iron, around the green and when you're close to the green. Lastly, choosing a lob wedge when you're chipping is more often than not a bad idea. I'm going to talk about why. So the next number I want to talk about is the bounce on your club. And if you've never heard about bounce before, it's essentially how much the club is raised up on this arc right here. The number you see on the bounce is a measurement of this angle here from the, the front edge of the club back. And the bounce can be low from, you know, four to six degrees of bounce. Kind of a mid-range is the seven to 10 degrees of bounce and high bounce clubs are around more than 10 degrees. There's a lot of reasons why you might want different bounce, but for most of you, I would say, choose something in that mid-range. There's a couple things that the bounce does. One, when you hit the turf, when you hit the ground, more bounce will prevent your club from digging down into the turf. And so if you hit the ball a little bit fat, if you have a tendency to hit the ball a little bit fat, more bounce will help you. Less bounce will tend to dig more into the ground. But also, if you're hitting off of a tight lie, hard pan, or something like that, more bounce will maybe cause you to skull the ball, to hit it with this leading edge, and that's no good either. So a lot of this can have to do with the kind of conditions you normally play around. But, like I said, if you're not sure what kind of bounce to choose, choose something in the middle. So now let's get into the differences between these two clubs. And the main one is going to be loft. Uh, right here I have what you'd consider a sand wedge. It's 54 degrees of loft. A sand wedge can range from 54 to maybe 56 degrees of loft. Those are the common ranges for what we consider a sand wedge. My lob wedge here is 60 degrees and anything 57 degrees or over is usually considered a lob wedge. But like I said, forget about those names and let's talk about the numbers. So I'm going to use the numbers of these clubs from now on. Unlike your irons, your wedges are all usually the same length shaft. At least they are when you buy them from the store. There's nothing that says you can't cut your 60 degree shorter than the 54 degree, and that's actually what I did by a half an inch. Just found it easier to control that way. But generally speaking, your wedges are all going to be the same length shaft, as opposed to the irons where the five iron is going to be a longer length shaft than say the seven iron or the eight iron. So when it comes down to it, the only real differentiator between a lob wedge and a sand wedge is the loft. Again, why I like to use the numbers instead of the names. You can have different bounces on different clubs. You can choose to have one length shaft or different length shafts. You can even have a uh, your 54 degree be a more forgiving design, a head design, than say the 60 degree. But ultimately that's all personal choice. When it comes to differentiating between the two clubs, it's really just about the loft. So now let's talk about what you would use each of these clubs for. And again, this might go against what you might have heard or common wisdom, but you can use both of these clubs for any shot you want. Because like I said, the only difference is the loft. Whether it's a full shot, sand shot, chip around the green, a pitch from just off the green, 
you really can use both these clubs for any shot you want. Now, some of these use cases are better suited for one club or the other, and that's what we're going to talk about. First, let's talk about the 54 or 56 degree wedge. Generally, less loft than your 60 degree is going to make the club a little more forgiving on longer shots. The extreme loft of a 60 degree makes it harder to hit the sweet spot, and it's more of a glancing blow even when you do hit a good shot. So the less loft of the 54 or the 56 is going to be easier to hit full shots. Now, full shot may mean something different for everyone. I use this club from about 110 all the way down to 50 yards. That's my 54 degree wedge. But you have to figure out what you would use it for. Um, there's nothing that says you can't open up this club a little bit and get more loft or, or close it down and get less loft. So practice with that around the greens. See what you like to use it for. Now let's talk about the 60 degree. And when it comes to the 60 degree wedge, it's really about the negatives because there's a lot of things that can go wrong when you're using that much loft. First of all, like I said, it's a more of a glancing blow. There's more loft, so the ball, even when you're hitting a perfectly descending shot, it's a glancing blow. The ball is not having as much forward momentum. So there's a lot of opportunity to have the ball balloon up and fall short. That seems to be something that I do pretty often, which is why I don't use this on full shots. Also, when you're in maybe heavier rough and the ball is sitting up a little bit, there's a chance that this much loft on your club is going to have the club just slide right under the ball and the ball's not going to go anywhere and you're still stuck in the rough. Because of these two common issues, a lot of players have a tendency to get really steep with this club and try to hit down on it really hard and that kind of brings in a whole slew of other problems. Keep that in mind with the 60 degree. It is more of a higher level club. It's harder to hit well and it to me it seems like more of a specialty club rather than a club you should be reaching for on a lot of your shots. So should you be carrying both of these clubs in your bag? That's not an easy question to answer and I don't think that I can tell you what you should be doing with your game. But what I am going to do is give you some ways to figure that out on your own. So I want you to answer three questions when it comes to these two clubs. And more importantly, remember the, the trouble club sometimes for some people is the 60 degree. So let's focus on that when we're answering those questions. So here's the three questions I want you to answer about your 60 degree wedge. How often do you use it? What kind of shots do you use it for? And does it cause more problems than solutions? Now it's pretty easy to figure out how often you use it. But if you find yourself using it a lot, then maybe you need to rethink your strategy, and that's why we go to those second two questions. What do you use it for? Are you using this for full shots? Are you using this for uh, every shot within 50 yards? If you're doing that, I would say you're probably losing some shots, unless, you know, you're Phil Mickelson. And Phil, if you are watching this, uh, next time you're in Jersey, you know, hit me up. Maybe we can get in 18 holes. I know some good courses around here. Maybe you do too. So really, it becomes that last question that I want you to focus on and that we're going to talk about now. Now, in order to do that, it requires a little bit of a deeper analysis into your game. And really, the best way to accomplish that is by tracking all of your shots. That may seem a little daunting, but there are easier ways to accomplish that. One of them is by using a uh, GPS app or a golf shot tracker app on your phone. Uh, there are plenty of apps out there that you know will just let you press the button before you take each shot and it will track the location and it'll give you a pretty good analysis at the end of your round. I use the, the Arcos shot trackers, that way I don't have to remember to press the button every time. It just, you know, tracks the shot automatically and it gives me a pretty good analysis club by club, round by round, and tells me where my difficulties are and where my strengths are in my game. So to show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to dive into some of the stats on my Arcos system and show you the difference between my sand wedge and my lob wedge. So from the rounds that I've tracked so far, I can see that I have used my 54 degree wedge about 65 times and my 60 degree wedge about 70 times. So it looks like I'm using the 60 degree wedge more often than the 54 degree wedge. So is that a problem? Let's look a little bit more. And what I want to look at in this case is my greens and regulation. That doesn't tell me a lot about around the green short game shots, 
but it does tell me on at least full shots where I'm having success and where I'm not. And really surprisingly, and, and honestly before I started making this video I didn't expect this drastic of a difference, but my greens in regulation percentage with my 54 degree wedge is 78.6%. Really happy with that. But what really surprises me is that my green and regulation percentage with the 60 degree, 60 degree wedge is 36.4%. Now, I know that I use the 60 degree wedge when I'm closer to the green, so why is that so low? Let's dive in and look at these clubs' statistics a little bit more. And with the Arcos, I can actually see that with the 54 degree wedge, I'm missing 7.1% of my shots to the right and 14.3% of my shots short. And my average distance to the pin on approaches is 38 feet. Um, I don't know if that's good or not. Now, if I look at the more detailed stats on the lob wedge, I'm missing 9.1% to the left and equally 9.1% to the right. So I'm missing left and right equally. But here's the kicker. And this goes back to something I said in the beginning of the video is that the lob wedge tends to balloon up and go short. Well, I miss 45.5% of my 60 degree wedge shots short. Now, that's clearly a problem because on 45% of shots, I'm not even getting it to the green with that 60 degree wedge. So if I go back and I think about if I just picked the 54 degree wedge instead, I'd have a lot more greens in regulation and probably a lot lower score. So if you want to check out the Arcos shot tracker that I use, I put a link in the description. Check it out. There's a lot of other options out there. You don't have to use that one. I've just found that one to be the best. If you think this has been helpful so far, make sure you hit that like button so that more people see this video. So what is my solution? Well, my solution is that I'm not going to toss the 60 degree wedge because I still think it has its uses, especially when you short side yourself, something like that. But I'm definitely going to stop using it from the fairway for those you know, 50, 60, 70 yard shots because it looks like I'm getting a lot better results when I use the 54 degree wedge. So what am I gonna use the 60 degree for? Well, I can tell you that it's probably gonna stay in the bag unless I've done something wrong, like short side myself. Because the benefit of the 60 degree loft is that you can throw the ball up high and have it stop quickly. And if I've short sided myself, well, I'm going to need that. And at that point, I might want to take the risk of leaving the ball short to get it closer to the pin or have it you know, stop in a reasonable distance. But also I have to think about the fact that I'd rather be on the green and 20 feet past the pin than to leave it short in the rough and have to chip again. So I want to be really conservative when I use that 60 degree wedge. I haven't quite figured out what I would replace it with, so it's staying in the bag for now. But my plan, my strategy from here on out is to keep it in the bag unless I really absolutely need it and I can't use the 54 degree wedge. What should your strategy be? Well, if you're a beginner, if you're just getting started or you're a high handicapper, you don't need a 60 degree wedge because it's gonna get you in more trouble than it's gonna help. Learn to use a 54 or a 56 degree wedge. That's really all the loft you need if you're just trying to break 90 or 100. If you're shooting in the 80s or 70s, well, then go through what I did and, and test yourself, get, you know, track your shots, see if that 60 degree is causing you more problems like it was for me than it was solutions and then make an educated decision about what to use it for and when to take it out of the bag. If you go through this process and track your shots to figure out if that 60 degree is causing you more problems than solutions, leave a comment below and let us know how it goes. I would love to hear more from more players and see how it's going. I think everyone can benefit from hearing each other's stories about this and maybe we'll figure out that it's really not that bad to get rid of that 60 degree. 